Hello friends, welcome back. Today I am going to show you this watercolor paddle cactus tutorial. And I am a native to Arizona and I'm realizing I need to have more cactus tutorials on this channel because I love them so much and you all have been asking for them over on Instagram. So let's get started. I am using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, Winsor & Newton Professional Quality Tube paints, and this first brush that I'm using is called a filbert brush. I'm using a size 10 and it is really nice for creating these perfectly round shapes and also holding a lot of paint since we're covering such a large area with these paddle shapes. So the shape of the paddle is like an upside down teardrop and they can be a little bit more rounded or a little bit more oval. You can have them more triangular and geometric. You can really play with the shapes of this and have fun with it. So with this type of cactus, you want to have a main center paddle and then you want to have different sized paddles coming off of it. So I have two different shapes going on. I have one that is smaller and one that is bigger. And then on these offshoot paddles, you also want to have smaller paddles coming off of them as well. You want to add these paddles while your main paddle is still wet. And I'm dropping in a little bit of color at the base of these paddles to give it a little bit more contrast and texture and color. But again, you don't want to have your main paddle or your offshoot paddle dry before you add a little appendage paddle. And these small parts that I have coming out of this top paddle will be for a flower in the future. Now I'm painting a second main paddle to the left. And with this composition, I wanted a smaller paddle on the right that had more offshoot paddles and then a taller paddle on the left. And I made it a little bit more of a blue color. And this one will have less of those little tinier paddles connected to it. This paddle on the left also has a little bit of an angle to it on its upper right corner. And I just think that's a cool variation. Something you'll see me do constantly throughout this piece is before everything is dry, I continue to add more highly pigmented color into certain areas so that it blends out really nicely while everything is still wet, but continues to add that contrast and depth that adding more color into certain areas brings. I really like the look of darkness where the paddles connect to one another as if that point where they are coming out of the original paddle is a darker hue or maybe there's a little bit of a shadow there. Throughout the piece, I'm going to be using a lot of different variations of green and blue and mixing them together on my palette as well as blending them together in the piece. So the buds that I've created at the top are for future flowers, but these little appendages that I'm creating on the side are to represent like a little paddle bud that is going to become a full-fledged paddle someday. So now that the painting is fully dry, we can start adding our layered colors. And I'm using a very light, bright green here. And you can use a paper towel to dab away some of the harsh lines as well. As I'm placing color, I'm keeping in mind where my light source would be. So in my mind, my light source is coming from the right. And so I'm going to be placing my lighter colors on the right where the light would be hitting them. And then these darker greens and blues are going to be mainly on the left where we would have shadows. So my biggest tip for a layered piece like this is to make sure that your layer is dry before you add another layer of color. After that, my biggest tip would be keep everything light. Don't do too many strokes because it might look really chaotic. Make sure you keep some of that color underneath as a highlight in your areas where the light would be hitting it. So for us, that's the right side. And then just be mindful of your colors. Where do you want your colors placed? Keep your colors consistently placed through all of the paddle cacti so that again, your lighting looks consistent.
So for these little paddle buds, I am just using a darker pigment and creating little lines around it to add detail. And now we get to add flowers to those buds we had on the top of our paddle cacti. Paddle cactus flowers are really bright and they're really big and open when they're fully in bloom. And so we're painting a row of petals across the front that is shorter, leaving white space in the center for when we add the center. And then we're going to paint a row of petals along the top. This flower over here on the right is not fully bloomed, it's more of a little bud, but I'm still leaving a distinction between the layers so I can add a little bit of a center. And then this one here is more of a tiny little bud that has yet to bloom. To balance out our composition, I am painting another flower on the left that is open and in full bloom. So keep these petals short, but have them come out wide and longer on the edges and leave white space in the middle for our center and then paint a row of bumpy petals across the top. Now it is time to paint my favorite part of the entire piece and that is the spikes. So the color combination that I use to get this darker color for the spikes is kind of a gray, paints gray, blue, some green. I don't want to do black. I want it to still be in the blue color family, but I want it to be dark enough that when it's against our shadowed areas, we can still see it really well. The trick to painting them so that they look realistic is you start with a little dot and that's your center point. Now, not every spike has to directly touch the dot. You can leave a little bit of space. I think that adds a really unique looseness to it, but you need to do really short and quick strokes. There needs to be combinations of four, three, and two. They need to be different sizes. They need to be different lengths, and they need to be going in different directions. Look around at the spiky neighbors and don't copy them and see where you can fill in the gaps and what areas need spikes and what areas are already getting crowded. For the final touches of the piece, I go through with a dark pigment of color and I add detail to any of the little blooms or blossoms, the little appendages coming off. I like to add little shadows here and there. Of course, we have to add the centers of our flowers to get them definition and texture and color. Anything that you feel like needs to be added to make the composition feel more complete. And you can totally be done at this point. It looks amazing, but I love to add a little highlight with some white paint straight from the tube right at the little dot we created for each of those little spiky areas. I personally feel like adding this highlight creates a lot of depth and a lot of contrast and texture. You can even at the beginning of your piece use masking fluid to mask these areas off and then remove them right here at the end. That would be amazing if you had the foresight to do that and know where all of your little spikes were going to be so that you could keep it as close to using the white paper as possible. And that is it. She is finished and she's looking mighty fine. I love the green. I love the layers. Cacti have a very special place in my heart, so I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for being here today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.